welcome back guys to the Hunter Collective and uh, our Regal Gentleman YouTube channel. Today we've got a really nice haircut in actually, it's one of my favourite haircuts today. It's, um, it's, we're going to do basically a overgrown buzz cut. So we're not going to be, we're going to obviously be, we'll do some clip work on the back of the side, but we're going to do the top as though it's, it's grown out from having a shaved head. This is something I, I love to have done myself. Um, you basically take the top down to maybe about an inch in length, but it's all done very small sections through your fingers. And the thing that gives the out, the out, like kind of outgrown effect of a bus cut is that we take the fringe nice and short. So the only that's the thing that differs from when you're doing a short haircut and you need fringe in there, it doesn't look too short. When you take the fringe short, you create that shorter effect. It does look as though you've had it, you clip it, but. We're going to make it look as though it's out overgrown from a clipper haircut, so there's going to be texture in there, movement in there. Um, but we're going to try and keep this nice and squared up. We've just been having a chat as well. A lot of the barbers, it says, takes the, the it takes it too high on the side, which is really good because with with doing anything like this, you still want to keep a little bit of squareness in there just to create head shape uh, and really define the face shape on the jawline. So we're not going to go mega short on the back of the sides. We're not going to see too much scalp. You want to still have it overall, so they're still having it quite dark all over, so there's not too much of a contrast in this haircut. Um, the only thing I've got to do though is just from the previous haircut, it's still quite high through here. So I'm going to take the edges just a little bit shorter on here, but we're going to stay away from scalp exposure. So no skin, no nothing. Just a very nice, uh, shorter effect of what we've got now. Again, the main thing is here is taking this fringe shorter, which will really create that nice outgrown, overgrown buzz cut. So we're going to start. On the top, working through my fingers, kind of fringe short, and then we're going to work through the back and sides up into the top to create that squareness. And a few good, really good techniques to show you how to cut, say Asian hair, I guess, to keep that nice blend in there without sacrificing length as well. So, yeah, we're going to start giving it a wash, condition, and then we'll talk you through how we do it. Right, so, we're going to start on the top, this hair cut, and we're working it down to pretty much finger length. So, I'm looking for about an inch in length. Um, Maybe a tiny bit longer because it's a little bit wet. But I'm going to take it down to about that length because I want to look as though again, I get, oh, I get sort of grown out from a, you know, a number four or something like that, or even just from a shaved head from the summer, for example. A lot of people do that, a lot of people shave it, and then they're in that stage of what they do when they're trying to grow it out. So this is a really good one for that. So again, come out from the crown, see exactly what's going on with it. Quite a lot of length through the back here. And as it gets kind of, it almost comes like this in the last haircut, so it's not a problem because we're going to take it shorter anyway. Um, but I will just make sure you see how it's falling from the crowd. And again, Asian hair tends to be very spiky. I've kind of got Asian hair myself, I know exactly that's like super, super spiky. But for this haircut, it's perfect because it's so thick, so straight, lovely to texture, and it gives a really nice kind of like, um, especially with the kind of very thick hair, it's nice to go quite short as well. So, so we clip in there. So we're sitting back. And I'm going to cut into. I'm not going to cut it too much. I'm going to put this a super, super point bun, almost straight, because I want this to be really super choppy on the ends. You see like that? Using my guide from the previous, going over it quite a few times. See that really serrated finish, almost like it's been razor cut. So as I'm working into the fringe, I'm not starting to pull this back like you normally would. For this, I'm looking to keep it kind of all one length. So I'm going to work into that fringe section, or just one before. I'm putting it forward, so I'm actually cutting the fringe. Normally when you pull it back and up, you don't tend to take much off the fringe because you know, you're kind of over-directing it. With this, I'm working it through, and I know what this will do. It'll cut the fringe short, angling it forward. So I'm following the way it grows. And that way, it cuts the fringe in. I'm going to keep this nice and straight, so I'm putting my fingers completely flat, angling my arm up, and I'm trying to keep it completely parallel to the other side. 
Not much will come off on this, that's fine. And just break it into the sides, so then when we put that product in at the end, get that really nice broken blend. So it looks again like it's grown out from a, a shaved head. And now I'm going to put it into the fringe and this is the bit that makes it look like a shorter haircut and we've got the fringe nice and short. What we do is break it into that fringe as well. Put it into it. Straight in. We're looking for that separation. Thin now texture. Now, because it says it's so straight and thick. I'm going to texturize this when it's wet. And that's probably the only rule, the only exception I will do this is on this hair. Because when it's dry, the texture changes completely. But I want to really break it up. And anyway, it's, e it's easy to break it up when it's wet. So what I'm going to do, again, we're looking for that nice short texture. I'm going to cut it in at the root. This helps to thin it, texturize it. And then when he puts product in it, it'll be super, super loosened. It kind of, um, you'll, see, you'll see the individual texture in it. It's one that works really well for my hair, so I know it'll work well for his, for his hair as well. And now to pull it back and just cut right into it really sporadically all over the place. And then we try and through. So I'm going to start on number three on this one. We're not looking for scalp exposure. We're not looking to try and create any, any sort of like a. We'll get obviously going to be a different different length all the way through, but we're not looking to make it too obvious. All right. So I'm going to start with three and then just keep it nice and low and take it down the bottom. So I'm going to work from my three to my two, two and a half first, and then work into my two. So I'm not, again, not looking for scalp exposure, and I think this will be just enough before we start seeing any scalp exposure. I'm keeping the blend here fairly low. I'm looking to create squareness in this haircut. So it's fairly round, and uh, I want to get that nice square, kind of a uh, strong masculine look to this as well. I'm making that two nice and low down. So there's my number two done. I'm just going to do a nice low taper. I'm going to taper the sides, just the side bend onto a one and a half, just keep a nice smooth finish. So again, nothing too short. Just cleans it up. And just around the ears, just taper it slightly in around the ears. And then just on the neck, but again, keeping it nice and low, so we're not showing off too much scalp. 
but I just want to raise his neckline up slightly. It's quite long and I want to kind of give it a bit, a bit of a shorter effect. I'm working on my 0.5 and just coming off into where the one goes and then the north I'm just going to raise that up slightly there as well just work up to where the strongest point of the neckline is just working again trying to keep this nice and square so working up from the blend with the occipital bones and hit it right at the back and just going for that nice square effect through here I'll show you some really nice blending techniques to keep maintaining this length and keep it sitting nice and flat. I'm going to work down. And this will smooth off the spike and give a really smoother transition into the blend as well. So we're taking the edge off with the traditional way of clipping over comb. Working from the bottom up across the cone, but then to create the shape, you almost have to freehand the spiky hair as well. So I'm working down. Just always just checking in the mirror to make sure you're keeping that nice squareness in there. That's how you get a really nice smooth transition on any thick spiky hair like this. I've got a really good tip for anyone who's working on very dark hair and using a mirror to create the shape you're going for. If you're not wearing a white shirt, get a white towel and hold it behind the head like this and it really shows off the shape. If you cover that down, it just blends into your shirt, the background of the shop that you're in. But I know it looks a bit mad, but if you look at perfection, hold the towel up and you can start to really see where the shape is. Because it's so dark, so light, you see the outline of the hair that way. And that way, I know that I need to finish off certain bits. So I see this side still a little bit slightly further out than this side. So I'm going to work again, working down inwards. And just using that. It's a good little way of just seeing shape, especially when you're working with dark, very dark hair. Double goes down, one goes in. Sitting nice that. Now once I've done that, I'm going to work around the outline of the ears. Nice and sharp, nice and tight. Again, we're not looking for scalp closure on this, so we can just want to line out really nicely. Because it's like an overgrown haircut, we'll have to make it look really fresh, so I'm going to detail the edges nice and sharp on this one. Right, so all that's left to do now is cut the crown shorter. So this helps me by cutting the crown at the very end, like I've done in previous haircuts, it allows me to see exactly what needs to be cut. But I'm looking for kind of quite an overall look on this one, but I don't want to spike up too much. So I'm going to leave a tiny, tiny bit unnoticeable length of the crown, but just so I know that it won't stick up. So just cutting it through, just trying to not cut it right directly across the crown. Crown down. Pull that back. Now I'm going to thin it out as well now. There you go, getting straight in. 
So that blunt is off the top. So you can see you do different texture things when it's wet or dry for different reasons. It's like I'm losing this purely for thin thing of the hair now more than a for texture. Super thick stuff. Okay, right guys, so that is finished. That's my sort of uh, short of a kind of overgrown cropped haircut. It's super textured and I think that helps a lot now as well. So what we've done by taking that fringe off, you see how much shorter the whole haircut looks as well. So it looks as though, say, say you've had a two all over and you're trying to grow your hair out. This would be like getting the back and sides cut to leave the top longer to make it look like it's always getting a longer haircut. But what we've done is cut this haircut to look like that. Um, personally, it's one of my favorite haircuts, that kind of choppy, short crop look. Um, but it's really good to create shape as well. So we've gone for that more squareness in this haircut as well because it was very round sweat when it came in. So we've created a bit more squareness in this now. But again, super easy, super choppy look, uh, low maintenance, easy to style, very easy to style if you don't want to, but works well for anything like anyone with this sort of short spike here. It's a great look for as well. So I'm just gonna blast any loose hair out and then I'm gonna start up with a little bit of clay as well. Right, so use a bit of your Regal Gentleman clay. Use again, don't need any more than a 5p. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit on the back of my hand, just in case I do, because again, even by thinning this out as much as I could, it's still quite thick, so it can might absorb a bit more product than normal. So more than going in with too much product, apply the normal amount, regular amount, and then add if you need to, where you save yourself loads of time and effort on the product as well, and also having to buy more as well. I'm gonna work this through like a shampoo. Get stuff right in there. Now, as I said, it's absorbed product, so I'm gonna take a little tiny bit more off the back of my hand, and just work this through, all the way through again. But you can see, do you see all that kind of movement and choppiness through that haircut as well? It's given that nice separation. And that nice little bit of text, that makes it look as though it's just very, uh, very short, very croppy. Very choppy and super easy to play around with as well. And this is for me one of my, my favourite looks really. I like that sort of short crop textured look. That's it. Don't need to do too much to it really to create this look. That's it. And when you've finished any little bit you've got left on the back of your hand, scoop back into the top as well. Save yourself in case you ever need that little bit more when you run out. So to recap, we cut the top down first, so probably to just above my finger length now. Unfortunately, I have very small hands, don't make any jokes, but I'd say it's about an inch long on the top. And then I really, really heavily texturize this. So working at the root, the very ends, right point cutting very deep into my fingers as well to create that real choppiness. Um, and then I work down to a two on the back and side, a very, very low one half on the side ends and a very natural low taper. We weren't looking for scalp exposure, we were looking for that again, that kind of like just short crop look. So we didn't want to make it look too different with it being like a one on the back of sides, because we're looking for that kind of overall similar length. Um, so we did down into a two, which again, we've got no scalp exposure, which is nice, and then just blended it up and then used the technique. Uh, I don't know if there's a name for it, I'm not too sure, but basically just working down to create the shape. So uh, I've heard words like fanning and things like that, but I'm not sure if it's called that, but basically work, blend it in the normal way, whether you're using scissor or a uh, or clipper over comb, and then take that line out, and then I just start to work, just the shape I'm trying to create, I just bring my arms down and I create that on his head as well. So anything with really spiky hair that sticks out, it's perfect for him. And then apply a little bit of the clay at the end as well, just to create that kind of choppiness, I to ex extend that texture that we've, uh, we've put in there as well. And that's the finish look, so are you happy? Yeah. Yeah, awesome, thank you man. Okay.